Hey guys, so today we have, um, we're going to be doing my final 2018 Senate map based on the polling in the forecast over from 5.38. So, looking <coughs> at the 2018 Senate map, it's definitely beneficial to Republicans. I'm going to clear the screen and start off with the blank map since that was my last prediction. So, let's go through, okay, uh... There we go. Um, let's go through all the safe democratic states. So Washington, California, Hawaii, New Mexico, I would actually classify as safe now. Minnesota, Maine, Vermont. Oh, Maine's safe for the independent, not for the Democrat or Republican. New York, Pennsylvania, <coughs> Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey. Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island. So I think we've covered all the safe Democratic states. So now let's go on to the safe Republican states. The states of Utah, Wyoming, Nebraska, Mississippi, and that special election there in the state of Mississippi. So now we have 39 Democrats, 47 Republicans. Now, where can the Democrats make up for this lost ground? They can make it up in the Rust Belt. I see West Virginia, Ohio, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Minnesota special election all being likely to go over towards the Democratic Party. Um, just because these are typically Democratic states, if we go ahead and look at, at the polling, just today a new poll came out showing the Democrat in Minnesota special election leading by eight in the Wisconsin race. I don't believe there was any polling done today. That we can, I, that was done, there we go, so if we go in, the latest poll showed Tammy Baldwin leading by 9, if we go ahead and look in the Michigan Senate race, it has narrowed down a little bit, but still in favour of Debbie Stabnow, Debbie Stabnow leading by 7 in the latest poll, and then if you go ahead and look at Ohio, Senate race there, uh, Brown is leading by nine in the latest Gravis poll. And finally, in the state of West Virginia, Patrick Morrissey versus Joe Manchin. Again, narrowed down a little bit, but Joe Manchin still leading at the end of the day. Now, we've covered all the likely Democratic states. Now, let's go on to the likely Republican states. And there is one likely Republican state, and it is a pickup for them. It is the state of North Dakota with Heidi Heitkamp and Kevin Kramer. Kevin Kramer probably going to win this race probably by about a five to seven, probably about a six to nine point margin there in the state of North Dakota. I would be very surprised if Heidi Heitkamp was able to pull off this upset. Now, we've covered all the likely states for both parties, so now let's go into the leaning states. And the first one will go into the leaning Democratic states. First leaning Democratic state is the state of Montana. John Tester has consistently led in polling, not necessarily by a wide amount. If we go ahead and look in Montana's Senate race, not necessarily by a wide amount, but still you can expect this one to go over towards John Tester at the end of the day. Um, I believe we've covered all the leaning Democratic states. Um, so actually, I I'm going to move something into the leaning Democratic column. Based on the polls that we've been getting today, um, Nelson has now led plus four, plus seven, plus four, plus five. Now, these are all in the leaning column. So, this one, even in the likely column. I don't think he'll win by seven, but I do think he will win and probably between two to five points now. So, I'm moving Florida from the tilt Democratic column to the lean Democratic column in the same place as the state of Montana. That's something to note. Now, for the lean Republican states. There is one lean Republican state. It's a state Democrats were really hoping that they could actually pick up because of the candidate in the state. However, the Republican in the state has consistently led in the polls done. 
Now, you're tossing up between Tennessee and Texas, aren't you? And and I see Tennessee as being a leaning Republican state. If we go ahead and look at the polling, just look at now how many times Marsha Blackburn has led in the public polling. Plus eight, plus nine, plus four, plus tie, and plus five. Um, if we go ahead and look at the beginning polls, at the very beginning, Bredesen had pretty much consistently led up until about August, only lost in one poll. But then Blackburn started to take the lead, and then she just skyrocketed. And for that reason, I'm keeping it in the leaning Republican column. So, by the way, guys, this is my final prediction. So, we have five states left that could definitely go either way. They could go towards the Democrats or Republicans. We just do not know because they are pretty much pure toss-ups. But some of them are slightly in favour of one party. And let's start with the uh, tilt Democratic states. In the state of Indiana, Joe Donnelly has had leads in the polls, if we go ahead and look at um, the polls there. Yes, today's poll has brought down, but you can see that overall the leads for Joe Donnelly are more than the leads for Mike Braun, um, and for that reason I'm putting it in the tilt Democratic column. If we go and look at the three-way race, Donnelly leads as well. Um, I think that the, this libertarian candidate could be taking away votes from Mike Braun, so that's not beneficial to him. Now, going over all the way to the state of Missouri. I'm calling this one for Claire McCaskill now. She has led now. Uh, sorry, Josh Hawley has led in many of the polls. Uh, there we go. Josh Hawley versus Clay McCaskill. Today, one of today's polls actually showed McCaskill ahead, and I'll tell you why that's better than having Josh Hawley ahead. Because see that one of the polls that had Hawley ahead today has an R by its name. That means it's done in the favour of the Republicans. Then if we go ahead and look at the Josh Hawley plus three one, it, yes, it's an Emerson poll, better. However, neither candidate is at the 50% mark, whereas in the poll that shows McCaskill ahead, yes, Claire McCaskill is at the 50% mark. However, this McCaskill poll has a larger margin of error. This one could go either way, but at the moment I'm putting it narrowly in the tilt Democratic column. In addition, if we go ahead and look at the 538 forecast, I like to trust this one a lot. There we go. They currently have McCaskill at a 56.1% chance. I would agree with that. Um, I think she'll probably go on and win this race, but not by a wide margin at all. Now going all the way over to the state of Nevada, I'm also saying this is a tilt Democratic state. If we go ahead and look at the polling, not as good for Jackie Rosen as it should be, but the latest poll shows Jackie Rosen leading by four. That is something to note, and the poll that's taken into account making it a tie is a Republican poll. So I do think that this one will, at the end of the day, narrowly go into the Democratic column. Look at the 538 forecast. Yeah, they give Jackie Rosen a 5 in 9 chance and Heller a 4 in 9 chance to win this race, and I'm putting it in the tilt Democratic column. Now, we have one more tilt Democratic state, and that is the state of Arizona. Now, I know I'm going on a lot, a lot of tilt Democratic states, but I do think that they could go either way. However, if we look in the latest polls, they seem very conflicting, to say the least. Look, we had McSally plus 7, Cinema plus 3, Cinema plus 6, plus 4. Uh, a tie, McSally plus 1, Cinema plus 3, McSally plus 6, Cinema plus 1, McSally plus 1, McSally plus 3. I would like to, um, I, I, I really want to, um, I, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, I, I really would like more consistent data, we're not going to get it much more consistent data, but 
it's just very inconsistent. If we look at the 538 forecast, so the polling has gone back and forth. Look at the 538 forecast. They have it as a lean D again. And the weighted average of the polls is 1.7. So I, I really think that Arizona is somewhat of a good thing for both for Kristen Sinema to take on. She's a moderate Democrat, not necessarily the best thing, but you can expect at the end of the day this one to narrowly go towards the Democratic Party. And now for the state of Texas, final state. Sorry, I'm calling it for Ted Cruz at this point. He has consistently led in many polls. Um, yes, I, I do give overall credit. The lead has narrowed down. Look, Cruz only leading by three. I really salute Beto O'Rourke for that. He's an amazing candidate. Just incredible. However, however, I don't see him coming past how Republican this state is. This state, this state is like so very, very Republican. Now, has gotten less Republican in recent years. I'm still calling it for Ted Cruz narrowly. Um, if overall pulls off this upset, I will be very impressed. And um, it will be a very, very, very good day for the Democratic Party and the Democratic Party of Texas and Beto O'Rourke. So, very good news if Beto was able to pull that one off. If Ted Cruz was able to win, many people would say, eh, just expected that. You can expect at the end of the day this to ever so narrowly go in the Ted Cruz column. So my very final 2018 Senate prediction is 50 Democrats, 50 Republicans, sorry, 48 Democrats, 50 Republicans, and two independents with the Democrats. Um, so there you can see if you, if you want to find your home state, uh, if it has like only red in it, that means there's two Republican senators. If it's all blue, it's two Democratic senators. And if it's one red, like, if it's, like, Montana with, like, half red and half blue like that, with like, the stripes, that means there's one Republican senator and one Democratic senator. Um, so, yeah, we'll have to see how that goes. So, thank you guys for watching this video. Comment down suggestions below, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.